What's up, YLC TV? We bring you greetings from the Bay Area, the Rock Church. Please do us a favor. Let everyone know that the Rock Church is on right now. We are embarking upon a new series entitled Represent. Type it in the chat. Represent. Represent. We believe it's our holy hypothesis that our responsibility is to represent Christ in the earth. One of the easiest, most simplistic ways for us to do that is by clicking the share button. Tag all your family, tag all your friends. We have a word for you today. Today's message is entitled, It's Not Personal, It's Just Business. I promise you, this word is going to bless you. Let's go in. I believe a great God deserves a great praise. Open up your mouth. Release a sound in this atmosphere. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. I need you to get lost in worship. I need you to get lost in praise. No spectators right here. I need some instigators. God says I dwell in the midst of praise. God, we exalt you this morning. God, we extol you. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, your name is worthy to be praised. God, you created the stars. I was created to worship you. You created the sun. You created the seasons. You meted out heaven with the span. I saw you high and lifted up, and your train filled the temple. God, we magnify you. We make you bigger. Bigger than our circumstances, bigger than our situations, bigger, bigger than our past. God, we love you this morning. God, I pray right now that you will set up residence in this house. God, I pray, Lord, that you will connect us with you. Let heaven touch earth. Our prayer this morning is that your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, I pray, Lord, that you will feed us today until we want no more. God, I believe we're on the edge of a breakthrough. I believe we're on the edge of another level. I believe we're one praise away from our destiny, and we will not be denied. God, we come like that Syrophoenician woman. Even the dogs can eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. God, one crumb of your word can change our lives. Arrest our hearts, arrest our minds, pour out your spirit. We need an outpour this morning, and we decree it is done in Jesus' name. Will you give God a thunderous ovation? I need you to prophesy to everybody around you and tell them it's already done. Go ahead and tell them real quick. Type it in the chat. Tell them it's already done. Whatever you need from God, tell them it's all ready done that's the wrong neighbor i said find somebody and encourage them tell them it's already done so you ain't gotta wait till it's over you can shout right now because it's all ready done i wish you would give god a preview of the praise you're going to give him after he releases everything concerning you it's all ready done I'm seated in heavenly places. It's all ready. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't have to wait to see it. I can shout the moment he says it. God says my word will not return void, but it will accomplish that what I sent it out to do. God says I'm not a man that I should lie, nor the son of man that I should repent. Whatever I say, it's coming to pass. If God says these black chairs are red, he's not lying. They will turn red before his word falls to the ground. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will stand. The centurion said, the centurion said, check it out. My daughter's at home and she's dealing with a devil. Anybody got to go to back to some stuff when you get out of here? And he said, but Jesus, check it out. You ain't even got to come to my house. All you got to do is send the word only and my servant will be healed. Does anybody believe that a word spoken in this room today will have a repercussion by the time you get home? God, we need a word from you. Look up and down your row and tell them new series alert, new series alert, new series alert. 
We are excited. I believe this series is going to be a game changer in the history of the Rock Church. If you have a cell phone, pull it out. If you're watching online, we are so grateful for you. We are grateful that by you clicking a share button, we literally have the power and potential to change the world. Lean over and tell somebody, this is the praise section. Go ahead and tell them real quick. Say, I don't know what you thought this was, but go ahead and let them know this is the praise section. I've had to keep myself together all week long. I had to be good in my cubicle. I had to be good, but today I didn't come to be good. Today I came to bless the Lord at all times and his praise will be in my mouth. There's a word from the Lord today. One verse of scripture, Luke chapter two, verse 49. To all of our first time guests, we are so delighted that you decided to worship with us. We are in the city of Richmond. We all go crazy for we're rich. Hey, hey. And everybody online, put in the chat where you're watching from, what city, what state. We thank God that our Rock family is ever increasing, ever expanding, and that's based upon you click and share. Tag somebody who needs to hear the word, like somebody who's been mean to you, tag them, tag them, tag them. Somebody who be hating on you, tag them, tell them this one's for you. No, I'm just like, uh, uh, tag your family, your friends, your loved ones. We believe that this word is from the Lord. Luke chapter 2, verse 49, New King James Version. And he said to them, why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Uh, will you help me preach this morning? Tell somebody it's not personal, it's business. Go ahead and tell me. No, that's the wrong neighbor. Find somebody behind you and tell them it's not personal. It's not personal. It's business. Uh, you may be seated in God's house. At the Rock Church, we have deemed, defined, and declared that 2021 is going to be our year of the re. It's our year to realign. It's our year to readjust. It's our year to reimagine. If you've noticed a pattern sequentially throughout the year, all of our series have been rooted in the re. The beginning of the year wanted to re-instill the importance of doctrine. So we did a series called Back to the Future, where we were going back to the Bible. I don't need memes, I need what the word says for me. Our, we followed that up and we regrounded our church in a series entitled Groundbreaking where we went through the seven bedrocks of the Rock Church. Please tell me that you don't go to something and you don't know what they stand for. Yeah, I encourage you to go to the website, therockchurchbayarea.org, and go through each of the seven bedrocks to see what our church is about. We then experienced revival. We shared a series entitled, Allow Me to Reintroduce Myself. Uh, we, we further the year by going to summer school where we reintroduced Christ. We discovered that there's a value to connecting first vertically with God and horizontally with one another. After 16 months of a pandemic, after 16 months only having the option of online worship, we finally got to come back together. We kicked off a series entitled Reconnect because it's important for us to connect not only with God, but to connect with community. Most recently, we proved out a holy hypothesis that the decisions that we make at Detours will determine if we reach our destiny through the series Recalculate. We've now arrived at a new series entitled Represent. No matter how much money we earn, no matter how many followers we accumulate, no matter where our careers matriculate us towards, the truth is you will always feel like something's missing until you recognize that it is your assignment to represent. I said it cute, let me make it regular. Uh, I don't care how much money you have, I don't care how many cars you accumulate, I don't care how many red bottoms, I don't care what labels are on the back of your clothes, the truth is you will always feel like there's something missing. Is there anybody who's been going through life and a part of you feels like on the way home from work, there's gotta be more than this. 
Is there anybody who looks like, I wake up, I routine, I go to work, I come home. There has to be something more than this. I would argue the reason why you feel emptiness is because the culture preaches self-absorption. The culture has you so consumed with yourself that you can't even see other people. And self-absorption will never fill you. Your fulfillment comes through serving others. I just lost the whole church. Notice last, last series when I talked to you about recalculating and making it to your destiny, it's easy for you to shout for you. But when I remix it and tell you that you have to represent so someone else can get to their destiny, it's crickets. It's because we're consumed with self-absorption. But I came to break that spirit in this house. At the Rock Church, we decree and declare that as for me and my house, go ahead and point up and down your row, as for me and my house, all of us, we're going to serve the Lord. The world is waiting waiting on you to represent. Your testimony is tailor-made to bless somebody else. When you represent, the world will be revived. When you represent, the world can be restored. When you represent, your family can be rejuvenated. Tell somebody, represent. That's the wrong neighbor. I need you to go hood on them and look them in the eye and say, it's time for you to represent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What sets you from? You got to represent. You represent your fraternity. You represent your sorority. You represent your clique. You represent your city. But you can't represent your Christ. The devil is a liar. Everybody that came out the closet except the church. Is there anybody who will stand up and sit back down and say, it's time to represent? Yeah. Yeah, I'm tired of repping the Raiders. I'm tired of repping the Warriors. I'm tired of repping the Lakers. I'm about to represent for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Says, I'm waiting on you to put on. I'm waiting for you to stand up. I'm waiting on you to cry loud and spare not. Somebody shout, it's time to represent. Yeah, I I'm trying to get a passion about other people. Yeah, yeah, watch this. Watch this. At your funeral, they're not going to put your bank statement in the casket. At your funeral, your wardrobe will not follow you. But the way to ensure that your life lives after you die is by how you represent. Uh, as we approach our text, it's Luke. Luke is cold blooded. He's a doctor. So, of course, his presentation of the gospel is thorough. He leaves no detail. Our passage is not found in other gospels, it's found in Luke's. Luke wants to show us that Jesus Christ is born, watch me, to represent. God in the earth. Did you catch me? The, the whole purpose of Jesus Christ is to re represent, re present God in the earth. In the beginning, John 1 and 1 was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. I don't have time to go through the whole thing, but all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. The Bible says, verse 14, and the word became flesh. And it dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Hebrews puts it like this. God, the Son radiates God's own glory and expresses, watch me, the Son, not the S-U-N, but the S-O-N. Jesus radiates, represents God's glory. Watch me, the express, the very character of God, and he sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. First Timothy, I wish I had an apostolic church, says, and without controversy, great, without controversy, it's no argument. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was in Christ, re re reconciling the world to himself. Colossians 2 and 9 says, for in Christ dwells, King James, all the fullness of God in a human body. You missed what I said. Everything that God has, it dwells in the fullness of the body of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 5 and 19 says, For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. Yes. Lean over and tell your neighbor, with all the sin you got, go ahead and tell them real quick. How in the world did you let him skip past that verse and you didn't say nothing? Here it is again. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Here's my shout. No longer counting people's sins against them. Anybody did it but know you ain't got no record attached to what you did? Anybody know that your past is erased by the blood of Jesus Christ? Here it is. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. Did you catch it? That you literally and I, we've been tasked with the responsibility of representing. God says, I gave it to you, but what you going to do with it? Yes. So my assignment 
to represent God in the earth. I did mine. I've handed it off to you. Now what you going to do with it? Philippians says, you got to have this mind in you. I've been trying to be a scholar by using NLT, but I grew up on King James. So I'll be, my, mind, my mind be racing scholar or preach like the Bible. Uh, uh, a scholar says NLT. King James says, let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus, who thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but emptied himself and made of himself, watch this, no reputation. God said, I would take you further if you would get rid of your ego. Yeah, if you cared less about what they think about you, if you cared less about being seen, I could trust you with a whole nother level of glory that you've never even seen before. He says, he says, he, though he was God, he did not think it equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges and took upon himself the position of a slave and was born as a human being when he appeared in human form. He humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor. I love y'all because y'all shout off the word. I can tell we related because y'all don't need somebody to sermonize and harmonize my hermeneutic. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him a name above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. You missed it. God gave him a name that's above every name. So whatever name you bring to his name, his name's above it. So when you bring cancer to Jesus, cancer has to bow. When you bring anxiety to Jesus, anxiety has to bow. When you bring your past to Jesus, your past has to bow. When you bring depression... At the name of Jesus, sometimes you gotta walk through your house and be like, Jesus, 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 Jesus. I didn't know what my grandma was doing, but maybe she was making everything in her word bow to the name of Jesus. Give somebody a high five and say, it's got to bow. It's coming down. I dare you to say Jesus four times. I dare you to say, I dare you to type Jesus in the chat. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Do you realize hell gets nervous? You give the devil a nervous breakdown when you say Jesus. So Jesus says, I'm clear. My role and my responsibility is to represent. Uh, he says, I got 33 and a half years to represent. What if I told you the clock is ticking? What if I told you they make little caskets like they do big caskets? Uh, I told my wife, I said, I don't want to be morbid, but I recognize time. I recognize that James says, life, King James, is but a vapor. Uh, NLT, life is like, like the, watch me, the morning fog. When I got up at six this morning, I saw fog. But by the time I met Deacon Whalen at the storage, I couldn't see it no more. That's how quick life is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm sitting here posturing, trying to impress people. God didn't call me to impress people. He called me to impact people. He didn't call me to get followers of me. He said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Yeah, Jesus says, I'm clear. My role is to restore, it's to repair, and it's to reconcile. Through the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, he fulfills his assignment. He says, I did my assignment, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook you up with power so you can do yours. Yeah. Acts 1 and 8, and you shall receive power. Yeah. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Yeah. He says, but, but you shout there, but you don't recognize the assignment is embedded in the gift. Yeah. You receive power to be a witness. God don't save you to get stuck up. God don't save you to get a special seat. God saves you so you can go get somebody else saved. Somebody shout, it's my responsibility to represent. It's my calling to represent. It's my assignment to represent. Now, now, after, now after, after the birth of Jesus, Luke low-key fast-forwards 12 years. We don't have any account of what occurs for Jesus Christ between his birth and 12 years old. 
Uh, here it is, verse 41, Luke 2, er year. I'm sorry, every year, I was in Richmond, sorry. Er year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. Huh, you slow, but you worth waiting on. Every year, Jesus and his parents went to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. All right, I'll try it again. Every year, Jesus and his parents, they go to this festival called Passover. Now, the reason why you missed it because you don't know what Passover is. Okay, so let me downgrade you so I can upgrade you. In Exodus, God tells Moses, he's like, check it out. I'm about to pull up on you. This is my version. Uh, I'm, about, I'm about to pull up. Death angel's about to pull up. So what I need you to do is I need you to go find a lamb. Yeah. I need you to go find a lamb, and I need you to kill the lamb. And I want you to take the blood of the lamb, and I want you to put it on the side post. Put it on the, I'll be very specific. Put it on the side post. And then put it on the upper post. Watch this. And, and, and when I see the blood, I'm going to pass over you. I don't, but, but, but pastor, what about what went on in the house? Don't matter. When I see the blood, I'm going to pass over you. But what if they got done lying? When I see the blood, I'm going to pass up. What if they ain't perfect? When I see the blood, I'm going to pass over. Uh, 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 he says, take the lamp. What, recognize that what you see in the Old Testament is a type. It's a shadow. Okay, y'all not feeling seminary. It's a blues clue to what's about to pop off in the New Testament. When John, I feel like preaching today. When John saw Jesus coming, he said, Behold! The Lamb of God that comes to take away the sins of the earth. Uh, Isaiah saw him and said he was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. Yes, God is a lamb. Uh, recognize when they placed the crown of thorns on his head, it was the upper post. When they nailed him in his hands, it was the side post. So what happened for them in the Old Testament is happening for you in the New Testament. You don't know how many bullets were supposed to kill you. But because he saw the blood, they had to pass over. You wonder why you did what they did but didn't get what they got. It's because when he saw the blood, they had to pass over. Yeah, tell somebody the blood, the blood, the blood. Y'all not feeling me, y'all not feeling me, y'all not feeling me. The blood, the blood. So everything that's covered by the blood, the devil has to pass over. Will you look down your row and tell him I'm covered? Go ahead and tell him I'm covered. Tell him I'm covered. I'm, I'm covered by the blood. You can't see me because I'm covered by the blood. You can't touch me because I'm covered by the blood. Why can't you leave God? Because I'm uncovered. But when I get under here, I'm covered. It was not my charisma. It was not my money. It was the fact that I was covered by the blood. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the slap three people and tell them I'm covered. I'm covered. I'm covered, I'm covered, I'm covered. I'm covered, I'm covered, I'm covered. Those are the wrong three. Tell them I'm covered, I'm covered, I'm covered. Somebody shout, I'm covered. I'm, I'm covered. Why do you walk with confidence? Because I'm covered. Why do you walk without condemnation? Because I'm covered. Why do you walk with no guilt? Because I've been covered. Sorry, I get to the blood, it messed me up. Because I'm thinking about how my record looks. But I'm thinking about how he spilled his blood on my record and you can't see nothing no more. I'm thinking about all the stuff I did wrong in 97. I'm thinking about how I slipped up in 06. I'm thinking about how I got caught up in 13. But I'm thinking that there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's name and sinners who plunge beneath the flood use all their guilt and stain. I thank God for the Every now and again you gotta go old school and plead the blood. 
You got to walk over your children and say the blood over my children, the blood over my marriage, the blood over my grandchildren, the blood over my ministry, the blood over my mind, the blood over my heart. Somebody shout the blood. I feel it in this house. There's an anointing that's about to break out today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't know that there's power in the blood of Jesus. There's power to cleanse your mind in the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. God, don't mess up my message. The blood speaks better things. Do you, do you realize the blood will speak up on your behalf? That God is the judge, but Jesus is your attorney. And he says, my blood is the evidence. He says, you're not guilty based on the blood. The blood. When Jesus, when Jesus, let me be a scholar. When Jesus, when Jesus was 12 years old. When Jesus was 12 years old, they went to the festival, here's, here's the caveat, as usual. Hi highlight that, they went as usual. After the celebration was over, they started home in Nazareth, but Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. They attended the festival, what does it say? As usual. Uh -huh. Every year, they would caravan, go to the festival, experience the festival, and go home. Age one, uh, go to the festival, experience the festival, go home. Year two, experience the festival, uh, uh, come home from the festival year three uh, get ready for the festival uh, go to the festival come back home year four 12 years they go to the festival as usual here it is in order to represent you got to prefer relationship over religion mm. just lost the whole church uh, uh, anything you do repeatedly has the potential to become religious Anything you do repeatedly has the potential of becoming religious. Uh, uh, people came over, our, 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 uh, our children's godparents came over, and they said, uh, uh, PC, can you run over to Pete's? I said, who? Can you run over to Pete's and get us a coffee? I said, who is Pete? <laughs> I said, Starbucks I know. Yeah. But who are you? He, they said, they said, can you go to Pete's? Can you go to Pete's? I felt like I was cheating on Starbucks. How will Starbucks feel uh, about me going over here to Pete's? And so I walked in, I put my hood on because I didn't want anybody to know that I was cheating on my girl, the girl with the green cup. You seen her, yeah. Don't and so I pull up in Pete's and I'm like, hi. <laughs> uh, can I get an oat nut cold brew with vanilla? Bye. Uh, because, because watch this, I go to Starbucks religiously. Yeah, uh, watch this, when I got my chai from Pete's, it tasted better than Starbucks. Watch, uh, I said, the devil is a liar. I, I spit it out, what is this in my mouth? I, I rinse the ink, get behind me, say, here it is. Uh, uh, they did it religiously. The, the danger of religion is, religion knows where Jesus was. But relationship knows where he is. Because sometimes the same God, Abraham, who tells you to kill your son at the bottom of the mountain will be the same God who will say, stay your hand at the top of it. And if your ears are attuned unto what he said, instead of being tuned to what he's saying, you might take a word from last season and apply it to this season. <laughs> Religion values tradition over truth. Uh, uh, at The Rock, how come you don't trip off of what we wear as long as we ain't showing too much Cleveland? Amen. And, 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 amen. And, and, amen. And as, long, as long as we keep it, keep it holy. Uh, the reason why is because religion focuses on outward appearances. But man looks at the outward, but God's looking at the heart. So at The Rock, you can suit it up. You can jean it up. We just care more about how your soul looks than how your clothes look. Yeah, yeah because, because, because religion puts, puts tradition up above truth. Uh, Mary and Joseph had the religious portion, but watch this, the relationship separated. They, they went every year religiously, but they baby boys stayed behind and they kept going. The relationship was separate. Here's what I've never read in this text. The Bible says, and they didn't miss them at first. Put it on my screen, 43B, Luke 2, they didn't miss him at first. They were moving as if Jesus was there, but he wasn't there. Huh? They were making moves, but they weren't making progress. Yeah, 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 yeah. Initially, they didn't miss him. They were having gatherings, but didn't have no glory. Huh? 
They were having service, but you didn't feel the presence of the son in the service. Initially, they didn't miss him. When my money's good, I don't miss him. On pay weeks, I don't miss him. Yeah, me and my girl good, I don't miss him. Yeah, yeah, I got another promotion, I don't miss him. My career is popping, I don't miss him. In actuality, what I'm saying to Jesus inadvertently is, Jesus, I was playing you. I wanted you for what you could do for me. But the moment I got what I wanted from you, I left you behind. So that makes me a praiser and not a worshiper. Because praisers praise him for what he does. But worshipers, you got to worship him for who he is. Praisers want his hand. Worshipers want his presence. Because in his presence, I feel it, his fullness of joy. Maybe you're unfulfilled because you want his hand more than you want him. I am so grateful. I am so grateful for what God is doing with the Rock Church. I'm so grateful that literally this small church that's about four and a half years old, literally through the pandemic, God has allowed us to go from seeing about two or 300 to 2,000. Weekly on average. Weekly on average. I'm grateful for that expansion. I'm grateful for the people who come from Arkansas, Las Vegas, Texas, Michigan, Washington, D.C. Weekly. To be, to be a part of the Rock Church. They're intricately, intricately woven into the fabric of our church. I'm grateful for that. But what I'm concerned about, what makes my job difficult to pastor, is I don't know who doesn't come to church based upon pandemic caution or who doesn't come to church based on personal convenience. What keeps you up at night, Pastor? What keeps you up at night? What keeps you up at night is that I used to just see them every week. So then it'll be like, so how are you and your marriage doing? How you doing with your singleness? What month we on? That's, that's, two, that's 10 months celibate. You ain't never done this in your life. God's got you. But, but there's some people who I don't see. So I'm interceding blindly. Uh, 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 I'm interceding blind, blindly and, and because the mentality is I'll get there when I can. Oh. Or it's I'll catch the replay. Oh. As if there's not a special glory when we all synchronize our times to go into the house of the Lord. What message do I send to my children? When they know every day we leave the house at 745 to get to school on time. What message do I send to my children when they know that we practice basketball on Mondays at our house? We go to, we, 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 we have violin, we have tennis, and we don't miss those. But when Sunday comes, we flip a coin to see what's going to happen. They get their clothes out for school. But Sunday is an anomaly. How can I teach them to prioritize Christ when I don't model it for them? So I'm asking, is it a matter of pandemic caution or is it personal convenience? Because I submit, if you can go to Costco, the Warriors game, the Giants game, the Raiders game, Bar Mitzvahs, King Singhettas, the Nail Salon. Lean over and tell somebody, there ain't that much COVID in all the world. Go ahead and tell them. That God just mysteriously matrixes the COVID in those places. But when I come to church, I just don't know. You better put me in a bubble, put some gloves on me, bubble wrap me, and just sit me and let me sweat myself to death. But I got to get to the house of the Lord. 4.5 million people died physically to COVID. But how many died spiritually? How many people, how many people lost their passion during the past 18 months? How many people lost their priorities during the past 18 months? 
They don't miss him. They're not hot. They're not cold. They're lukewarm. And because you're lukewarm, God says, I spit you out of my mouth. They have a form of godliness. I'll catch them. They ain't got no power. Revelation 3 around 17 says, because you say I'm rich and I'm wealthy and I'm balling out and I don't need nothing, you don't realize you're wretched and miserable. You're poor, blind, and naked without hope and you're in great need. Is there anybody in this house that says, I don't want God, I need God. I ain't got no God chasers in here. Is there anybody in this house who says, Pastor, it ain't an option for me. I don't care where you take us. You can take us to Sacramento. We can go to Richmond. We can go to San Ramon. We can go to San Leandro because I need him. As the deer pants after, as the, deer pants after the water brooks, my soul thirsts for you. Y'all don't know nothing about hymns. I need thee. Oh, I need thee every hour. I need thee. Lord, bless me now, my Savior. I come to you. Somebody shout, I need him. I need him like the air I breathe. I need him to be my sustainer. I need him to be my mind regulator. I need him to be my prince of peace. I need him to be my bright morning star. I need him to transform me by the renewing of my mind. If I don't have him, I ain't got nothing. Somebody shout, I need him. didn't know what to think. Son, his mother said to him, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been frantic, searching for you everywhere. Point number two, in order to represent, you got to stop taking it personal and start taking responsibility. Did you, see, did you read the text? The parents said, why have you done this to us? If I'm Jesus, I'm like, I'm 12. I'm like, you left me. You an adult, I'm the adolescent. And you as an adult, you going up to a 12-year-old saying, why have you done this to me? The text says they were frantic. Because when your emotions are high, your ability to process things properly, cognitively, is compromised. When you're in a victim mindset, you see everything being done to you. Lean over and tell somebody, stop personalizing everything. Okay, you tried to say it like a scholar, go Janet Jackson, tell them you're so vain. Go ahead and tell them. I bet you think this sermon's about you, about you, don't you. You, you ain't saying to, I'm praying for you. Everybody wants milkshakes, but my wife, oh, not me. 
Not me. I have water. I'm good. She does this a lot. Like yesterday, I said, "What you want to drink?" Oh, I'm good. I have water. I was like, oh, "Excuse me." Uh, so, so, so the irony though is, so when we get our shakes, she got to sample everybody's shake. I said, "But we could have got you. We could have got you." Right, so that's beside the point. I'm sorry. Uh, so, 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 so. Did I lie? Okay. So, so. We go into affluent neighborhood. Me and my daughter are standing in line. And I'm looking at the person up there, and I'm like, Psh, she ain't even excellent. Psh, she ain't even smiling, green people. <laughs> See, this is why I don't like coming to neighborhoods like this. Psh, I'm black, she probably looking at me crazy. She was probably at the Capitol, now that you think about it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, the Capitol. And Brooklyn's like, Brooklyn's like, Dad, you good? Oh, I'm good. We get up here, she better not say nothing crazy. She says something crazy, she don't even know me. She don't even know me. And you ain't gonna front me in front of my kids. No way. So we get to the front. So if in that moment she don't speak to me, I gotta look at how am I looking? I'm looking like, say, I wish you would. She said, how you doing? Wait, 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 huh? Look at your daughter's hair, it's so beautiful. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. I said, can I get a chocolate milkshake? No chocolate. I'm just glad to say that. I said, can I get a chocolate milkshake? Can I get a vanilla milkshake? And can I get a strawberry milkshake? Oh my gosh, absolutely, you're gonna love it. Our milkshakes are made with real ice cream. You're gonna love it. Do you want, little girl, do you want sprinkles? She ended up being the nicest person I ever met in my life. Holy Spirit said, now tip her for your assumptions. And don't spiritualize it saying it was discernment. It wasn't discernment. I felt something over here. It was, it was a spirit when I walked in. No, it was defensive. It wasn't discernment. No, you felt like you didn't want to get hurt. So you built up walls to protect yourself. But every time you build up walls to protect yourself, you're actually isolating and insulating yourself from experiencing people that God has sent you to experience. Stop creating stories. If you can create stories where something's happening to you, that means you can also create stories where you're making something happen for other people. If you're tired of being hijacked by your emotions, if you're tired of people being all up in the video, sorry, if you're tired of being hijacked by your emotions, if you're tired of being a prisoner of your past, if you're tired of, of recreating your pain, if you're tired of creating conflict in your own mind, then you gotta learn how to take responsibility. Responsibility reduces blame. You create a story of what was done to you, but you can't see what you've done to others. Blame incarcerates. Responsibility, watch me, liberates. Who lost who is irrelevant at this point. What matters is I'm going back to find them. You missed what I just said. Did he leave me or did I leave him? It's irrelevant. The situation is we separate. Y'all miss what I just said. So somebody got to do something to go back and get it. You spending all this time trying to analyze the past when you can be in the present and fix your future. Tell somebody, go back and get him. Go back and get him. I refuse to spend the rest of my life blaming and being a victim. It was the neighborhood I was raised in. It was the environment I was raised in. It was my ex who stole my heart. It was my heart that was broken. It was my mom and dad not doing what they could do. The devil is a liar. Indicting them does not exonerate you. Here's the reality. The reality is I've hurt people. And people have hurt me. So the reality is I need to forgive myself for the people I hurt. And forgive the people who hurt me, pick up my life and get control and move forward to my destiny. Slap somebody and say, take responsibility. 
It's not happening to you. Make it happen. Forgive yourself. Get your mind back. Get your joy back. Get your peace back. Stop waiting on somebody else to give it to you. The kingdom suffers violent and the violent take it by force. Snatch it back. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. That's it. That's it. Tell somebody it's not personal. Go ahead and tell them quick. It ain't personal. Tell them it's business. It's business. It's business. The first two points. Did you see how cute the sermon was? The first two points were personal. Yeah, they were personal, but it ain't personal. Jesus is about to show you. It's business. Uh, here it is. He, he, he says in the text, he says in the text, he said, why did you seek me? Did you not know that I got to be about my father's business? So he is saying that after you take responsibility, you got to find your reason. If I were you, I cannot spend another day on this earth not knowing the reason why I'm here. The reason why you feel unfulfilled, bed to bed, job to job, state to state, church to church, group to group. The reason why you feel unfulfilled is because you don't have a reason. <laughs> why do I why do I why do I feel good on bad days? Because I got a reason. Yeah, why, why, why do I run in the morning when I when it's cold and the temperature change? Because I got a reason. Yeah, I, I, I got a, I got a reason. I got a reason. He, he, uh, the French call it, watch it, your raison d'etre. Raison d'etre. Say it so you can say you learned something. Tell somebody raison d'etre. Your, 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 your reason for living. It's the most important reason or purpose for someone or something's existence. The culture is fixated on what? you drive? What position do you have? What's your relationship status? But you can have all the what's and be devoid of a why. You keep saying, God bless me with what? He says, you can have all the what's after you get your why. Because what would it profit a man? I feel like preaching. To gain the whole world. What? 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 Would it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his why? So Christ says, I'm focused on why. Oh, God, you're doing too much. You're giving me too much too soon. For the joy that was set before him. Why? He endured the cross. Despising the shame. Because he had his why on lock. Yeah, your assignment, and only about six of y'all going to do it this week. Your assignment is to spend time with your maker. Because your maker will download your mission. And you need to get a one sentence. I see you, Deaconess Janice, typing your assignment. You're the only one who's going to do it. Your assignment this week is to spend time in prayer with God and say, what's my why? What's my mission statement? Clearly. Here's mine. My mission. My mission is to represent Christ in the earth and to empower people both spiritually and existentially, period. See how clear it has to be? You see how succinct it has to be? My mission is to represent Christ in the earth every morning. That's what I'm here to do. And empower people existentially, your everyday life, and spiritually. That's my mission. So I wake up knowing that's what I'm supposed to do. Notice that my mission mirrors the mission of my maker. Uh -huh. All right. Come on. All right. John 10, the thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and destroy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus said, but I come. come on, Holy Ghost. But I come. That you might have life and have it more abundantly. So you got to talk to God and ask him to give you your mission. This mission statement, it guides the moves that I make. My mission tells me what to say yes to and what to say no to. My mission helps me see that it's a good opportunity, but it's not a God opportunity. Yeah. 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 Uh, so every day, when I want to wild out and trip, what's your mission? Mm -hmm. My mission is to represent Christ in the earth. So that means in my marriage, every day, my mission is how do I love this girl like Christ loved the church and gave himself for it? Mm -hmm. come on, come on. That's my mission. Come on now. When I'm disciplining my children, what would God do to you in this moment? 
Well, that takes away all of my tactics. God would not withdraw himself from you. God would tell you what he did, what you did wrong, but he wouldn't make you sit by yourself. He would come next to you and say, you got caught up, but don't do it again. He would tell you, you represent me. Remember whose name is on you. So I told my girl, I said, look, when we, I told my girl Brooklyn, I said, look, when I'm, when I'm talking to you, you ain't in trouble. We don't even do in trouble. I don't want you to operate out of fear. We do an ownership and responsibility. Right, right, right. So when I tell you, so I'm just trying to give you game so you don't have to make the mistakes, but I ain't freezing you out or acting weird or withdrawing from you. That could leave you with trauma. So whenever you do get in trouble, just tell me the truth quickly and we'll fix it. I said, you too mature for me to be petty and having tantrums and arguments and being weird. You too grown for that. Guess what the response is? I got you, Dad. Because it's my mission to represent Christ. Lean over and tell somebody, represent. When you represent, as I'm talking to you about representing, the devil's talking to you about why you can't. The enemy is telling you that you got limitations. Jesus, what you doing talking to people in the temple? You only 12. Y'all missed it. You only 12. How are you going to represent to scholars? You only 12. Lean over and tell somebody, I may be young, but I'm ready. Y'all not catching this? <laughs> it's the holy side. It's my side. All right. <laughs> Here it is. Here it is. Come close. Here. Tell somebody, I ain't to nothing. No, that's the wrong neighbor. Lean over and tell somebody, I ain't too nothing. I'm not too old. I'm not too dark. I'm not too broke. I'm not too limited. I'm not too nothing. As a matter of fact, if I'm too anything, I'm too blessed to not represent. I'm too anointed to not bless the rest of the world. I'm too gifted to sit here on my gift. It's time for me to represent. Listen, we are out of time, but we are most certainly not out of message. I pray that this series in its entirety, this message, the one you heard today, I pray that it will be a blessing to you. I wanna invite you to feed what feeds you. We are strong proponents of reaping and sowing. I encourage you to sow into the word that you just heard. You can text TRCBA to 77977. All of your gifts tax deductible, but listen, when we are blessed, God blesses us to be a blessing. So consider sowing 20, 50, 100, whatever the Lord puts on your heart. It enables us to come to platforms such as these to take the gospel to the world. Until next week, God bless you.